In one corner you have the King Cobra, a snake that has literally been named King and is basically a colossal living legend. It can rear itself up over four feet off the ground and look you square in the eye. Some people believe it could literally incapacitate an adult elephant. In the other corner you have the Black Mamba. It's the most feared snake in Africa and widely believed, correctly or not, to be the fastest and deadliest snake on the planet. With a jet black mouth, its threat display instills an instinctive fear in humans. But which is deadliest? And who would win the confrontation? Hey everyone, welcome to Zoology with Will. The two snakes we're going to examine today inspire perhaps more fear and fascination than any others on the planet. And naturally the question of which is deadliest comes up a lot. And who would win in a confrontation? Well, today we're gonna to find out, but we're gonna do it using science and we're gonna debunk any myths along the way. Let's dive in. One of the most fascinating things about these two species is that they are respectively the longest and second longest species of venomous snakes on the planet. King cobras are absolutely massive. It, it's hard to explain how incredibly huge they are. They can top out at somewhere between 18 and 19 foot long, that's often disputed, and they regularly get over 12 foot long. Black mambas on the other hand are almost equally long, but nowhere near as stocky. Nonetheless, they have been recorded at somewhere between 14 and 15 foot long. Again, this is often disputed, but they are definitely not more than four foot behind the king cobra in length. Let's take a look at a clip here to try and get a grasp of the huge size of a king cobra. Now, I'm not sure if that's a tall man or not, but take a second and look how much bigger this king cobra is than that man. When people say the world's longest venomous snake, do you really think this? Or frickin' this? What in the world? It looks like a frickin' Brachiosaurus. I mean, this one's smaller than the other ones, but look at the freaking size of it. Better put some respect on the king's name. As you can see, they are absolutely huge, and it's not just the length, they're very stocky animals as well. They are impressive to see. Now, I don't have to tell you that when it comes to the winner of this round, it most certainly is the King Cobra, by weight and by length. When it comes to strength and speed, this gets really interesting because we've got two very, very different animals. First of all, the King Cobra is a slow, methodical mover when it's kind of lurking around the jungle and doing its thing. It doesn't move anywhere quickly unless it has to. And it is also a very rigid, strong animal. It doesn't use constriction, but it has a very strong head and neck. And if we look at the anatomy, it's quite easy to explain. You can see that there's a thick neck, a stout body. This is a structurally strong snake. The black mamba, on the other hand, is also very, very strong. But when you look at its anatomy, you see it's built differently. It's got a more slender neck. It's got a more proportionately long, slender body. It's built for speed. It's built for moving very, very quickly. They're an incredibly fast snake. They're incredibly agile. And you can see from the footage I'm about to show you just how quickly they get away from humans when they can. That was drone footage from Dingo Dinkleman, and that's not someone stood on the ground, that's from up in the air. So you can imagine that snake is covering a lot of ground. They're incredibly quick, they're incredibly graceful and agile. They move through water, plants, land, trees with ease. Now look at one literally raising itself up off the ground and into a tree. Now the King Cobra on the other hand has brute strength. It's a thick, stocky snake. It overpowers other animals when it preys on them with its venom, obviously, but also with its grip and with its kind of pressuring them to not get away, basically. It's very hard to describe, but it's definitely not a constrictor. It's just very, very strong and it hangs on. Take a look at this one actually preying on a reticulated python.
for those of you who haven't dealt with large constrictors, a reticulated python is ridiculously strong. Really, really strong. I mean, if one has a grip around something and you're trying to get it off, it, it's like trying to pry apart a piece of wood or something. That's, that's how incredibly strong they are. And the king cobra isn't phased. Even if it's got it around the neck and it's trying to strangle it as it's got its bite on it, it still isn't strong enough to take out the king cobra. So for this round, the king cobra definitely wins on strength, even if the black mamba wins on speed. King Cobra Venom is very interesting and perhaps slightly more complex than you might at first think. It's broadly neurotoxic like most elapids, so cobras, coral snakes and kin, and it has some specialisation towards immobilising reptiles like lizards and snakes. But it also has some cytotoxic and proteolytic compounds within it, so it can cause tissue damage, it can cause you to have surgery after a bite or lose a finger, for example. And another feature of King Cobra Venom is, of course, the obscene quantity that can be injected in a bite. Take a look at this clip of the Kentucky Reptile Zoo milking a King Cobra and the size of the vial that they have to have the venom go down into. That's a lot of venom. Untreated, the bite probably has a mortality rate of somewhere around 50% or higher. So, is it instant death? No, not like a lot of people believe, but it's kind of more a gamble, in fact. For example, take a look at this news clip about someone in Thailand who got bitten by a king cobra. A renowned crubby snake catcher is receiving public support after being bitten by a king cobra while capturing a large snake on December the 24th. Despite the serious bite, Suti's calm reaction minimized venom spread, though he required surgery on his arm. Known for his 17 years of service and dedication to helping others, Suti has over 300,000 supporters online and and snake bites are common in Thailand with thousands of cases annually, but fatalities remain low due to accessible medical treatment and anti-venom. So yes, generally speaking, you can survive a king cobra bite with a bit of luck. And especially if the king cobra is in a reasonably good mood. The black mamba, on the other hand, has a very different venom, despite the venom still being broadly neurotoxic. It is geared more towards small mammals, and it also has longer teeth that inject it more deeply. So, if a black mamba bites you, you could have up to half an hour to get anti-venom, but possibly as, as little as 15 minutes. And the mortality rate, a lot of people disagree on it. People believe it's instant death if a black mamba bites you. This isn't true, but the untreated mortality rate is disputed by lots of sources. It's not me that's going to end that argument today. My sources from the research I've done quote between 40 to 100%. Look at this clip by the African... Snakebite Institute, with a person telling us how they actually managed to get to hospital after the bite. The rest of the snake was not visible. When he let go, I knew I was in trouble. You knew that? I knew I was in trouble. I had severe pins and needles, no metallic taste, but I didn't think I was going to die. But I didn't think I was going to live as well. The doctor asked me, are you still breathing? I knew it was a black mold. In that video they also explain that the typical symptoms that everyone tells you is that you get pins and needles around your mouth in particular and you get a metallic taste in your mouth and that means you're in trouble after a black mamba bite. This person says they just had severe pins and needles and nothing else but they still knew they were in trouble. For this round the winner is quite clearly the black mamba in terms of venom strength and the speed of its action. I personally wouldn't want to get bitten by either but if you had to choose, choose the king cobra. King Cobras are famous for being Ophiophagus because they eat snakes, and that's what that word means, and it's even in their Latin name. So they kind of stalk and overpower other snakes. They move along and they just grab them and bite them and often just hang on until the other snake passes away from the venom. And as I mentioned earlier, they're very, very strong, so they can resist pythons and even very large rat snakes fighting back. Take a look at this one with a monitor lizard. I think it's a Bengal monitor that it has already previously bitten. And you can see that their venom is effective, but after a while, the snake just goes and hangs on.
Now, monitors are pretty tough, so you know, there's not a lot that can take out a monitor lizard, but King Cobra Venom will do it. Mambas, on the other hand, are fast. What you would call cursorial hunters, as in chasing down their prey, despite the fact that they don't have legs. They use their keen eyesight, and they tend to kind of get to a prey item as quick as they can, bite it once at least, and the Venomax very, very quickly, and they often go backwards a bit and just try and avoid any, any fight back. They're not physical hunters. They just like to bite, let the Venom do the work, and then go in and eat it. So let's see this method with one of their main prey items, a rat. One blow is all that's needed. Just two drops of a black mamba's venom can kill a creature the size of a human. For the rat, the end will be swift. The snake waits as paralyzing toxins take effect on its victim. A quick nudge to ensure the rat is immobile and the snake begins its feast. Now to us that might look quite vicious, but I actually think that's a very smart approach. It doesn't want to have a fight with an animal. It wants to let the venom do all the work, basically. That's probably safer for the snake than the King Cobra's method. So what does this mean if the two had a confrontation? Well, the winner in terms of diet is obviously the King Cobra, because he's already got some great practice eating other snakes. Something you need to know about the King Cobra is it is quite a slow mover. It looks quite fast on film sometimes, but it is actually relatively slow compared to some other snakes. And you can kind of learn to predict its movements and predict what it does. And the, as a result of that, we see lots of celebrities and even famous magicians turning their hand to handling King Cobras and, you know, picking them up above their head and stuff like that because they are a relatively easy species to manipulate. Take a look at this clip to see what I mean. Incredible. I've always been fascinated by snake charmers and Fitz is one of the best I've ever seen. God. I wasn't in control at all. I was learning a new skill from a great teacher who's a master and putting all of my faith in what he was saying. Ilmu yang saya uh, dapat dari ular uh, ini apa ya? Kita bisa menjalin hubungan jangankan dengan manusia ya. Kita dengan hewan aja bisa menjalin hubungan dengan baik tergantung kita. As I was going down to kiss the king cobra, I realized it's not a kiss. It becomes an actual connection. You're going head to head respecting the king cobra. So there's no connection being made. There's a snake that's being manipulated and stressed out to kind of aid people's egos. So for me, when it comes to the King Cobra's behavior towards humans, I'm kind of more interested in humans' behavior towards King Cobras. More often than not, it seems that they are the victims, not us. Especially when we take into account all the King Cobras that get killed by people who don't want them on their land or who fear them. Black Mambas, on the other hand, are far too fast to play around with. They're not something you want to show off. They're not something you want to free handle for the camera. They are something that pretty much everyone takes seriously when it comes to handling. They often do repeated strikes if they get upset and they feel cornered, and each one of those strikes could kill you, quite simply. So they aren't one to play with. They're much more flighty, they're much more nervous, and they're much more easily agitated than a King Cobra. So they are more likely to cause bites if they are cornered, for sure. However, in general, you must admit that black mambas do not like being around humans. Watch what this naturalist has to say about it. Black mamba with the potential to stop a human heart in 15 minutes. And I think it is simply stunning. Look at that, the black interior to the mouth. It is a snake that just looks like trouble. And there's no doubt that it has the potential to do us as human beings great harm, but it will do anything to avoid us. Instead, it lives its life quietly as far away from us as it can get, up in the treetops, hunting for birds and rodents. I'd almost completely agree with that, aside from the fact that it isn't strictly arboreal, so it would be on the ground as well. But overall, that was very, very concise, and that expresses how most serious herpetologists feel about black mamba's behavior. 
So what would happen in a confrontation if these two colossal, highly venomous snakes actually met? If they were confined, say in a, I don't know, a small room they couldn't get out of, and a mamba couldn't get away and use its speed to escape the king cobra, the king cobra would eat it. Basically. There's, I've got no doubt about that. Obviously, on open ground, the king cobra would never be able to catch the black mamba. And here is where we underestimate black mambas, in my opinion. I think they're a more pragmatic, smart species geared purely towards survival. I think they avoid conflict. I think if they met a king cobra, their instincts would kick in. They would feel that the king cobra wanted to eat them and they'd get away. That's exactly what I think would happen. And if you don't believe me, look at the huge natural range that black mambas occupy. A species doesn't do that well by being aggressive and trying to fight and kill everything it meets because that lowers its chances of survival. More conflict equals less survival and evolution doesn't allow that. If I've learned anything from doing this video, it's that these two species are literally living legends. They are more incredible, more fascinating, perhaps gentler, perhaps smarter than any of us think most of the time. But what I really want you to come away with is a new perspective, that they are deadly and they will stick up for themselves if cornered, but also they are capable of restraint and always avoid conflict with humans if they can. We might not see a head-to-head -head between these two species anytime soon, but that's absolutely fine with me, because I'd be sad to lose even one individual from either of these species. Anyway, that's gonna do it for today. I hope you found this interesting. If you did, please do like and subscribe, and I will be back next week with something new. Thank you very much.